euch anschauen. Very slow. Okay, here we go. Sorry, I forgot I said I would lead Francis out today. Um, cool. So yeah, first one is about, uh, I think I only shared this window, so I'm not going to open the tab, but I can summarize it here. It's about virtual service and gateway API support. Um, wanted to get some more feedback because me and Frank didn't fully agree. And I, yeah, more feedback here would be, be useful, I think. So the idea is right now with Gateway API, you have Gateway and your routes and those bind together. Um, for migration purposes, you may need features in virtual service, but you may still want to adopt Gateway API. So you may want to do it incrementally. Uh, not every feature in virtual service is in the Gateway API yet. It plausibly will be in the future, but not yet. Um, so what this PR is doing is allowing a virtual service to bind to a Kubernetes gateway. Um, so you could have like a mix of virtual services and routes on the same gateway. This only applies to ingress because for mesh, we already, um, well, I don't know how to explain it really succinctly, but it already works this way for mesh because you're not actually binding to a gateway, you're binding like to a service. And so there's already only one, one or the other used for a service, I guess. So there's already yeah, one or the other, but in the broader mesh, you can have both. Um, so the question is whether we should allow this. The, the benefit is that it will potentially push more users to adopt the gateway um, because they don't have to worry about losing functionality where they need it. They can just switch to virtual service. The downside is that we'll forever have a um, burden of maintaining the East Studio virtual service indefinitely with the new API. So we're kind of making the clean new API uh, dirty for backwards compatibility, um, probably forever. Because once we add it, it's quite hard to remove. We can't just say, you know, you have two releases where you can use this for migration, and then we're going to remove it. I mean, we could, but that would be kind of unprecedented and kind of strange behavior. Um, so that's the idea. I can give more details if we need, but would love to hear other people's opinions. Go ahead, Keith. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, I've been thinking about this. I've been watching, kind of watching the PR and trying to formulate an opinion for a little while. Um, I'm still not, I don't know if I can, can articulate it properly, but I'll do my best. Uh, it, it, it feels dirty to me. Um, it's kind of the best way I think I can, I can put it. Um, from an API perspective, essentially, you know, what we're doing is, attempting to retrofit a older API into a into a newer model. And not only that, uh, you know, we're signing ourselves up to um, kind of paint over any of the incompatibilities in a way that's not that's not terrible. Um, I off the top of my head, I can't necessarily think of anything super, super off. Uh, but I'm thinking about users coming in and asking, oh, I, I, I bounded, uh, I bound my virtual service to this gateway, um, but the mirroring doesn't work. Well, like, what, what, what's the best way to best way to mirror? So, I, and especially as gateway API HTTP route grows over time and capabilities start becoming duplicated in both, um, it, it just, it feels, it, it feels like we're setting ourselves up for confusing messaging. Uh, by allowing this, um, I, I do understand Frank's uh, argument in the in the PR about there's kind of this kind of you know, showstopper necessary functionality in virtual service. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, I, I I feel uneasy about about that direction because uh, I don't I don't I, I feel like as a project we are allowing users to. Shoot themselves in the foot, for lack of a better term. Yeah, thanks, Kate. That's pretty much exactly how I feel. So I'm glad you you said it that way. Um, you want to go ahead, Kasim? Yeah, plus one, basically. Um, 
I, it used to be an unpopular opinion, but uh, hope I'm, I'm, I'm very happy that uh, I'm on the same page with uh, with Kit and John uh, this time. Uh, it 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 is again we have quite a few incompatibilities in behavior and design, a lot of other things between um, between the two, and and it's it, it's better not to mix them. It, I, I use both. It's 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 very confusing, and and I think we are going to hurt ourselves if if we allow mix up. It's better to have a clean break and and use one API or use the other one. But maybe with certain granularity. I mean, there needs to suffer something else. If I yeah, go ahead, Kwa. Yeah, I agree. I think we need to separate. Mm -hmm at least separate user journeys, but there's still a problem of people not being able to migrate. So I think we also need to separately um, add some metric at least or something that we can understand how many people are using gateway versus virtual service. Because otherwise, I think if you don't solve the migration problem, it's got a permanent divide and that's not good. Uh, actually, sorry, but I, 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 I'm happy that I have someone to disagree with. Uh, I, I, I think migration is not what we want to do. I mean, it's not, uh, we, we treat migration and, and everyone using the new model, new ambient or using uh, HTTP route as, as kind of a goal. It's not a goal. It's a goal to have customers use the right tool for their problem. Some people use virtual service, some people use HTTP route. There is nothing wrong with people continuing to use virtual service as long as we support sidecar and Istio, which will be as long as people need it. Uh, HTTP route is a narrow API that has specific use cases, virtual services and other use cases. Ambient and CSIC are not something we're asking people to choose one. You can use both of them and, and, and you know, pick the right tools. Uh, well, Probably a better discussion for Ambient, right. but... Uh, so I think that that's, that might be okay, but uh, that's, con that's the confusing part, is the fact that we are saying that both are okay while also saying that Gateway is the future. That's probably the confusing part because that sort of makes it necessary to add features to gateway that have virtual service from the virtual service, and that that's where the whole you know effort comes from. So we need to make it much more clear that both APIs are there for a long time, and there's no need to converge them. I, I wonder if we can if we can segment this a bit because it feels like when it comes to the gateway API um, th that there are two different areas. Uh, we were talking about gateway API being the future. The first is actual ingress gateways. The second is around some of the gamma mesh functionality. Um, I think from mesh uh, gateway API being the future is, is a little muddy because it is so experimental and there's a lot um still that we are kind of fine tuning uh when it comes to gateways though it, it seems a lot more straightforward gateway api is you know the standards body for ingress gateways in kubernetes today um so it gets a little hairy when it talks when we talk about the api la layer because virtual service is used for both um i think the pr being used here specifically is about binding virtual service to gateways uh, specifically Kubernetes gateways. That's the, is, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so if, if that being the case, I, I personally, looking at where we are today, uh, I'm, I feel a lot more comfortable with, um, with the pace and the kind of the community attention that the ingress segment of Gateway API is getting uh, enough to say, uh, and enough to feel like that really is not just the future, but is is actually rapidly approaching the present um, today. Like if you, if you're trying to get started with an ingress gateway in Istio, it feels like you should be using Gateway API over the regular ingress. There are there is a persona for kind of that shared uh, multi-tenant gateway. Um, don't want to don't want to discount that, um, but that still is pretty possible my understanding it's still possible with gateway api today um and so I, I wonder if it's possible for us to be prescriptive here um and and segments again i don't think we have to decide this in this discussion today 
But I'd be very curious to see if there is appetite or consensus around kind of getting, uh, you know, prescribing to the community and saying, Gateway API future is now for Ingress, use that um, and, you know, up the documentation to have Gateway API as, as the default, uh, if we feel like it's ready. And I, I, at that point, I don't know that, you know, at that point, I feel like then what that will allow us to do is when there is a feature disparity, we encourage folks to contribute upstream to Gateway API. Um, we kind of focus development efforts there uh, instead of trying to keep pulling virtual service itself into Gateway. That's kind of, there's a lot there. So I'll just, I'll kind of throw that out there and see what people think. Um, yeah, I, I mostly agree, except the future is not now. It's in two weeks when it goes GA in my mind. So we're pretty much there. And at that point, I think we, we should do that. And uh, but that doesn't mean that we need to deprecate virtual service or anything. We can have two things that are fully supported in first class and just recommend one over the other. I think that's that's fine. And it is a bit confusing, but we can ease over that confusion. And it's the same as what Kubernetes is doing with Ingress. Yeah, that's a very good point. The precedent is there. The one thing I would say on recommending, though, it is an Bit annoying that we can only recommend it for Ingress and not for Mesh because they have an API for Mesh and Ingress, um, which isn't ideal. Um, so we may need to think about that a bit more. But I think we're we're at least uh, definitely heading in that direction that it can be the first class most recommended thing. Although at the same time, I don't really know how much if we have a doc that says, you know, gives two options and say we prefer this one, how much that impacts users. Maybe a lot. I I just don't know. Uh, well, I just wanted to make sure that uh, we are not we are not signaling that we're deprecating things. Or if you do deprecate things, we need to make a give a very long timeline. So that needs to be said right now when you put things the recommendation, not later. So if, if we if you're gonna remove things from virtual service or use Git Gateway by default, and we plan to deprecate some things. We need to make sure it's announced very early on. Uh, yeah, I think the consensus so far has been that we are not deprecating anything. We're just adding new options that do the same goal and are better, but nothing is being removed or, or deprecated. I don't know what the term for that is, so you could probably make one if you wanted. Overshadowed or, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Yes, I, I'm, yeah, yeah I, 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 that's just not clear at all from the API versioning because it's always alpha beta. There's no V1 in Istio. So like that, that's a message that sort of gets confusing because you, you start writing config and it's all alpha beta. And you see GA gateway, the immediate assumption is that that's that's the one that we should be using, not the beta and alpha, right? So that, that needs to be somehow set in the in the schema, maybe upgrading the version, I don't know, but that's not that's obvious at all to people. I, I think there is a bit of discussion about some beta alpha, some some alpha APIs that may or may not be promoted, and that kind of implies they would be deprecated or not. But for the beta APIs, I don't think anyone proposed any deprecation. Just like nobody proposed any deprecation for sidecar. So there is no migration. It's a choice between the two. And until someone has a concrete proposal and it's approved by TOC or someone, I think it will be. You know, detrimental to 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 you know, kind of suggest that anything is deprecated. And I'm okay with V1 to moving to V1, but probably after ambient is out, so we know exactly which parts uh, are common, and you know, because we can still make small changes between beta and V1. Yeah,
All right. Um, any more comments here? Or should we should we move on? Looks like the feedback on the PR will be that we probably don't want to do this right now. Um, obviously, we can always change our mind later for adding something. So that's fine. All right. Um, next up, um, I don't know if Paul's here. If not, I can take this one. Oh yeah, Paul is here. Paul, do you want to yeah. talk about this? Yeah, sure. Um, I just wanted to give everyone a heads up about um, an announcement I posted on Discuss yesterday. Um, we have an update coming on the 10th of October to patch some um, well on boy CV. Um, the release numbers are in the announcement because I'll doubtless get them wrong if I just try and remember them. Um, that was it. Cool. Awesome. Um, thanks. Last one. I'm just guessing Mitch wrote this, but I don't know. This is Mitch. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, that's me. So uh, I think everyone has felt over time some of the pain of not being able to start meetings or join meetings without permission. A lot of that is due to some legacy things about how the Istio workgroup calendar was set up, which we cannot fix uh, in that particular calendar. So we are moving to a new calendar starting next week. So Monday's TOC meeting uh, is being scheduled on the new calendar right now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I will very brief or in just a moment, I'll be sharing a link to that calendar. It should be publicly visible to everyone. I'm also going to be updating the links in all of the combined working group doc, the ambient contributor doc and the technical oversight doc. So that if you use the docs to join the meeting, the links should be correct there next week. And there's also the calendar. I, I do want to make sure you realize, though, if you've imported the events into your calendar using the, the public Istio working group calendar, those links will no longer be good. Unfortunately, I can't shut those meetings down. Um, so you'll be able to join a meeting and no one will be there. So if that happens to you next week, uh, hopefully you can remember this little chat and find the correct link in the doc and join us. And this should mean, by the way, anyone can start the meeting, anyone can join the meeting, and anyone should be able to record the meeting. I'm working on getting community members access to edit meetings. I'm not quite there yet. That's going to take a bit more time. Um, thanks, Mitch. On the old calendar, I have right access to it. Do you think it would be good for me to go and edit every meeting and say like obsolete and link to the new calendar invite and how to join it? After after the ambient meeting this morning, I think that would be a good idea. Unfortunately, the way Google calendars works, it's a one time copy into your calendar typically. Um, but there's a way to add it that's not one time copy. So that'll that'll help some people. We should do it. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, I, I have both, so I, I'll I'll have both issues, but we can at least help some people. Um, Yep. Okay, I will do that. Can you put the steps on how to get the new calendar here or the link to it or something? And then we can follow yes. that and I'll put it in the other invites as well. And maybe we should have someone join the meeting next week for yep. the old one and corral people back in. So I'm sure people will, will join. Wow, I should have shortened that link, but uh, there it is. Mm, I don't know that it's there. Oh, there it is. Okay. Cool. Oh, I don't know how I have my hand. Um, Keith, I think you had a hand, but it looks like it's down. Is yeah, there so, else? Yeah, so um, let's also, it's, it's probably part of your, on your under list, Mitch, but let's also make sure we update uh, the community repo uh, with the appropriate links. Uh, I, I want to make sure that all the places are aware of the new of the new meetings. Thank you for reminding me. That's a great point. Perfect. Now I have four copies of the working group meetings on my calendar. So I'll make sure I don't miss it anymore. <clears throat> All right. Um, 
we've got about 30 minutes left if we want to talk about anything or we can end early and pick up in the ambient meeting or any discussions there. I've got uh, early draft or something I'd like to get some folks, uh, get some eyes on from people. Um, I'll put it here on the, on the meeting agenda. Uh, you can have a more in-depth discussion next week on on this doc, but I started uh, a proposal for a Lua filter and uh, started a, a doc talking about some of the background on Envoy on filter. Um, this morning, banged out some some sections on um, two two of the big questions, which is uh, filter execution order. What are you, what are we doing instead of uh, patch semantics? Um, as did I put it in the right doc? I think I did. Okay, yeah, I see it there. Um, and then also workload binding uh, versus in, in selection. Um, so. Um, kind of put my ideas there uh, on and kind of the decisions that I want I'm proposing that we move forward with. Um, I know several folks have uh, lots of opinions here um, around, you know, and John started talking about some of this in the ambient meeting uh, last week. So um, if you've got thoughts about uh, the future of, um, you know, Envoy APIs and Envoy extensions, uh, then that would, would appreciate any eyes or, or, or feedback ahead of next week. Um, and then we can have a more detailed uh, chat during uh, next week's meeting. One question I have is, say we ship this, how do we message to users in the docs uh, when to use Wasm and when to use Lula? That's a good question. Um, do we have any guide, existing guidance out there for Envoy Filter? Or was there any guidance out there when it was Envoy Filter? Or are you saying that because we're creating a first class API, we need to take a bit more ownership uh, and create some guidance there? Is that kind of the idea? Yeah, I mean, there was no really guidance with with Envoy Filter because that, that, was, that was a user's problem. Got it. Um, so yeah, I think that the, uh, I can, I can, it's a good point. I'll add a section to the doc um, for Envoy or for sorry, Lua versus Wasm considerations, um, and it, it similar to Gateway versus Istio APIs. Um, it uh, it probably makes sense to to have a some section in the docs that discusses them. Uh, in my mind, the big question uh, or, or the kind of the big reasons for using uh, for Lua would be if you've got an Nginx background and you're looking to adopt Istio, uh, you're probably going to find Lua a bit more, potentially find Lua more accessible than Rust uh, or, or C um, as far as compiling to, to Wasm. Other reasons are the, uh, if you've got some constraints around um, memory resource usage or you um, are storing anything like stats, uh, well, technically you can't. Uh, you can you can probably do some stat stuff, maybe. No, I think Lua is just refresh response stuff typically. Um, but if you if you need to store some things, if you've got anything that's going to be memory sensitive, um, maybe not use uh, Wasm because of some known um, known constraints on that side. Uh, but I can um, create some some preliminary uh, preliminary guidance in the doc for us to discuss. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have two comments. Uh, one is definitely we need to make sure WASM and Lua APIs are consistent and use the same mechanism, including how the code is distributed, how the code is isolated, how uh, one side impacts the other. I mean, you know, because we have namespace isolation and all the other things. And I'm also kind of dubious about your claims that Lua would be a lighter version than, than uh, WASM. I mean, WASM at least theoretically has you can set boundaries on execution time. You can set boundaries on memory usage. Maybe there are bugs, but with UI, I don't think they have this capability. But maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I the I don't. There, there's VM configuration for the Envoy VM, uh, but my understanding is that that's part of the core implementation. I see Kawat's guys with hand raised. Probably tell me I'm wrong. Um, but I think part of the core. Uh, implementation of the Wasm engine and Envoy um, 
has a, a WASM sandbox where memory is not freed. Um, and, and so it can, can grow, I've experienced it where it can kind of grow unbounded, um, but I might be wrong about that. I just wanted to add a couple of things. If you're gonna push Lua as a first class API, I think we have to do it thoroughly, meaning you have to provide telemetry, operational guidelines. It's not just you know choices, it's about yes, if you use Lua like and it and it causes problems, how do I triage it? So it means things like, you know, if it errors out, how do we indicate it in telemetry? We should we should measure overhead. You can measure overhead of a simple script and just provide simple guideline on sizing. Uh, we also need to make sure that uh, ideally we have some latency reporting, so like we know how much time it takes, but that's probably not any time short short term. But I mean, in terms of what which one versus Wasm versus Lua, it, it it comes down to the many things. I think they can fail in the same way, so I don't know if it's really. If that answers your question, Akustin, but they both kind of have the same faults. So I don't know. It's really not about the choice of fault. It's about just the, what, whatever is easiest to use with the world. Yeah, it, 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 you know, using languages in, in web servers is uh, as long as, you know, a very long tradition and, and you know, JavaScript, uh, PHP, Many other languages have been using browsers, so it's not something we can stop and we need to probably live with that. But we need to make sure it's considered. My main request is to whatever we do for Lua, we should do the same thing for, for Basm and, and they should work together and then go and JavaScript or whatever else and we will start supporting. Yeah, it almost points to having a generic like plugin API instead of Mosma plugin, Lua plugin, Go plugin. I don't know. It's a big change. And what was me? It's kind of that because the language is not, you know, that is true. Yeah. Can we compile Lua to us? <laughs> we Lua has a different that. execution. Uh, it, it's it's the yielding all the time. It's not like Wasm or it's taking over the thing. It's it's uh, it operates differently. You can compile it, but it's going to be awkward. And also, Wasm is not really a good language for. It's not JavaScript. It's very different from JavaScript. It's not trivial to compile JavaScript to us. But soon someone will add the JavaScript plugin. I mean, you have Lua and Golang, and Wasmo, and it's, anything goes. Lua has a garbage collection by default. Wasm, you have to compile a garbage collector. It's a very different thing. So it has a trade offs. Wasm is much more appropriate for managed languages like Rust or C. Yeah, these are all really great things uh, to, to put on my radar that, that I hadn't uh, necessarily thought about in depth. So I appreciate y'all raising this, you know, try to get this uh, integrated into the into the doc. All right. Any any other extra items? All right. Well, everyone can take the time to go update their calendar entry and see you all in 25 minutes or so. See you. <clears throat>